Well, thank you again so much for having me this early morning on the morning brew. And good morning, everybody. Again, thank you for joining us. My name is Kelly Holmes. My Lakota name is Wambli Ogianwi, which means Flies Among Eagles Woman in the Lakota language. And I am Minikoju Lakota from the Cheyenne River Reservation in South Dakota. And I currently live in Denver, Colorado. And I am the founder and president of Native Max New Media, the editor in chief of Native Max Magazine, and the founder and event director for Native Fashion in the City. And uh, again, I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to share my story of um, creating um, the different ventures that I have created. And I was invited to speak today on uh, sharing a little bit about my journey as well as um, the importance of diversity in fashion. So thank you again for joining us. So a little bit about Native Max. Native Max is a digital media company devoted to inspiring, entertaining, and celebrating through storytelling. Through our platforms and content, we want to bring our readers the positive and inspiring side of Indian country. Native Max has a constellation of platforms such as print, digital, web, social, video, interactive events, and more. Native Max is a bi-monthly glossy publication that features the positive people and stories of indigenous people of North America and beyond. So when we first started out, of course, we only featured um, Native American people in the United States. And then slowly we branched out and featured First Nations people of Canada. And just last year and this year, we're branching out even more featuring different indigenous people like from Hawaii, from uh, Puerto Rico, from Mexico um, on down. So this year we're really kind of um, branching out and featuring indigenous people from all over. Um, because our platform is so unique, we feature the positive people and stories um, of indigenous people. So um, we, um, we receive different story ideas and such from different people all over. And then this is Native Max Magazine that you see. This is our um, bi-monthly publication that we publish. And these are some of my favorite covers that I included in this presentation. Who you see here is Savannah Alira Rose. She was the first Native American actress to lead a um, a TV show, it was on Netflix. She was in Chambers, it was pretty cool. And then on the bottom left, you see Eugene Brayrock, who was in Wonder Woman. And he was so cool, amazing guy, um, super cool. And on the right there is, I don't know how to pronounce it, Tomasina, Tomasina, Chupko and Cheyenne Kippenberger. Cheyenne Kippenberger is on the left. She is Miss Indian World. She, um, uh, both her and Thomasina are from the Seminole tribe in Florida, the Unconquered tribe. And Thomasina Chupko is actually a doctor. Um, she has her own jewelry line that she gives proceeds to um, missing and murdered indigenous women causes and she is so cool. She's like, I love her. She's so cool. And yeah, moving on. I'm also the founder and event director for Native Fashion in the City. Native Fashion in the City is more than a fashion show. Native Fashion in the City is a developmental and educational program and an annual event which aims to support the next generation of indigenous fashion designers, stylists, models photographers and more by providing a creative professional environment to foster promising fashion talents such as little to no cost business mentoring, educational seminars, webinars, networking opportunities and coaching and more. The aim of NFITC is to root the indigenous fashion world firmly in the international fashion scene. 
by giving a platform from which talents from across North America will be given an opportunity for exposure and experience for models, fashion designers, hairstylists, makeup artists, wardrobe stylists, or photographers. It's basically a platform to give opportunities to Indigenous people who are interested in working in fashion because already we work against um, a lot of barriers. There's not a lot of opportunities or you know, not a lot of doors for us to enter into the mainstream fashion industry. So um, with NFITC, my aim is to sort of um, provide that platform. My experience in fashion. So my experience in fashion actually starts um, when I was 16 years old. I started out as a model. I got, I was discovered, I was discovered as the term goes, um, at a powwow by Stephanie Jerome. I was just walking around with my cousin and um, I was just this tall, skinny girl. I wasn't really good at anything. I was so, I was so stick skinny and I was invited to uh, model and do a photo shoot. So I went to my first photo shoot is very professional studio lights, you know, professional photographer and assistants and all that. And I was so scared. I had low self-esteem, low self-confidence, and I, I wasn't very, you know, um, confident in, in doing this photo shoot for the first time. I wasn't very good. And then to make it worse, some of the other girls who were experienced, they were, um, they were kind of like making fun of me. They were kind of like, you know, saying that I was taking forever, taking pictures and they weren't very helpful. So that really, of course, hurt my feelings, but I'm resilient like that. So I just kept going. I wanted to learn more about modeling and practice a little bit more. And um, at the time there was uh, native fashion was kind of coming around. Um, that's uh, Native American designers creating designs and then Native American models were modeling these and this was starting to happen all over and I wanted to be a part of it but at the time it was really clicky and unwelcoming so I again I wasn't discouraged I was just bummed but I that really helped give me the motivation to start something that, you know, would be different. And um, yeah, I did commercial modeling, fitness modeling, editorial, promotional. I was also a hair model because I have long, <laughs> long hair. So I was also a hair model and yeah, so modeling definitely gave me that experience in fashion that helped build the foundation of what I'm doing today. And right after that, I was also a fashion fashion and, and accessories designer. I started Glamir in also um, oh, 2010. I created Glamir, a fashion brand that offered select services such as fashion designing and styling. My purpose from the very beginning was to be a reliable source for fashion design, personal styling and inspiration. Basically, I wanted to give the feel of, you know, that luxe, high-end feel with um, the clothing, but at an affordable price was my aim for Glamour. And with Glamour, I actually was a personal stylist. I was a personal shopper which was so fun. And what the clothing and accessories that I did design, I designed um, uh, just jewelry, from jewelry to dresses to coats, fur coats. And with that, I did my own photo shoots. I planned and produced my own photo shoots. I booked photographers, I booked the models. I worked with different um, talent agencies here in Denver for the models and at the photo shoots, because I couldn't afford a makeup artist or hairstylist, I actually did my model's own hair and makeup. And 
I also plan and produce my own runway shows um, at the time at the downtown at the different clubs downtown on Market Street. They had like Saturday night fashion shows. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but I did that. I would showcase at a few of them. And it was fun. Again, I, I got to have the models come in. I got to style them. I got to do their hair and makeup and get them ready to go on the runway. And at the at this time though, working with Glamour, I was working with primarily non-native models. So predominantly white and Hispanic models I worked with. I didn't work with native people yet. And at that time, again, still, it was very closed off, like clicky. Um, that's the best way I could kind of describe it. I didn't know anybody, so I wasn't really welcomed into anything. So that is my experience, brief, ex brief explanation of my experience in fashion. Uh, the pictures that you see here, of course, uh, were from different, were from different events, different times. Um, like I planned, a I planned this photo shoot at the clock tower on downtown 16th street mall. That's at the clock tower with that in the background. So, um, and then I plan photo shoots. Uh, there's me with a few of my models and the one picture of me, that was me modeling. I modeled once, so. And yeah, let's move on real quick. So Native Max Magazine. I wanted to share my journey a little bit of creating Native Max. So after working on Glamour and getting um, experience in fashion, I really wanted to be featured. So I wrote to different Native American publications at the time and I didn't hear back from anybody. I don't think anybody really wanted to tell my story or that was, that was the vibe that I got. So I thought, you know what, well, let me create something that will feature anyone, no matter what, no matter who they are, what they're doing. I want to have something that will give everyone a chance on being featured. Our native people really need it. You know, we really need the spotlight and we need the push and the support. So I created Native Max in 2012, but I actually came up with the idea again back in 2007 when I started modeling. So I finally was like, okay, right now's the time to, you know, pull that idea out and work on it. So um, I created Native Max. This was our first issue ever, the premiere issue. This is Mariah Watchman. She is from the Umatilla Reservation in Oregon, and she was the first Native American model on America's Next Top Model. And she was our very first cover star. So when she sent this with her photographer, Whitney Minthorn, who's from the same tribe, Umatilla. I, I was so excited. I felt like this really set in stone what we want to do. You know, it's very contemporary. Obviously, it's contemporary. It's not, you know, um, your typical Native American publication or media. We weren't, you know, the four color, four sacred colors or four directions or, you know, um, the you know, we didn't have any of that. We wanted, I wanted to start fresh. Um, the aesthetic, the vibe, presentation, content, everything. I wanted it like you've never seen before in Indian country and in native communities. So as soon as people saw this, of course, everyone was like shocked, like who and what, you know. So this was our very first issue. The premiere issue is huge. And that was 2012, uh, uh, September 2012 was when we released this issue. And now uh, we're in our eighth year. Yeah, in our eighth year. So <laughs> we're still going, still going. 
and this is Native Fashion in the City. I found a Native Fashion in the City in 2014. I'm a person. In 2014, I think. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm a lead person. There's people um, cutting cutting grass right next to my window. So sorry if you guys can hear that. And so when I first started Native Fashion in the City, I so with Native Max, I was invited to different fashion shows and I was invited to different fashion shows and I didn't get any, um, I didn't sit like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, I went to different fashion shows throughout the Native community and I just didn't feel like there was any progress being made um when i would go to fashion shows it wasn't it wasn't like what i felt like it should have been so what i did was i we hosted a few fashion shows when we first started and i was invited by the rocky mountain indian chamber of commerce the executive director shadina to host a fashion show at their annual indian biz expo and this Indian Biz Expo was, of course, very professional, very serious. So I, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to, what I'm going to do. But so when I planned the fashion show, I actually planned it um, like similar to a fashion week. I brought a lot of the attention to the designers to sell, to make business connections. Um, I wanted to really set this apart from everyone. And the first one was definitely interesting. It was, oh, I'm sorry. I thought my camera turned off. And it was, it was awesome. It was amazing, an amazing experience. This was the first Native fashion event in Denver, really. So a lot of the um, Native community there here as long, as well as non-natives were really like oh whoa this is pretty cool i i even invited my contacts some of my um contacts from my glamour days and they were very impressed they were very like you know wow this is amazing i want to come to more if you put on more so the next year i was again invited to plan the second nfitc at the rmicc second indian biz expo so or for the second time and i came and plan another one and then the third year it I, I received more inquiries more interest uh more designers wanted to be a part of it more models and so i plan a third one but on our own um on our own without being a part of the rmicc chamber and from there we just kept having them <laughs> and they of course grew with size every time and it be, now is its own platform, is its own entity, its own thing. It's so cool. We're known as the premier native fashion event of Indian country in uh, native Ameri uh, North America. All throughout North America, we work with different designers. I worked with designers from the south, south of the United States. I worked with Canadian First Nations designers from Canada up north. So we've really come so far and we grew from just the fashion show, an annual fashion show. Now we do different um, educational ed opportunities, workshops. Um, and this year, obviously, um, we were supposed to have our fashion show in March during the annual Denver March powwow, like we always do every year. But of course this year, we had to postpone it until uh, an unfor unforeseen later date, unfortunately. So it, um, yeah, it's a bummer because, you know, we, we love fashion. Everyone that participates in this event, we love looking forward to this event. This is like the highlight of our, the highlight of my life is this fashion show. And it was just, you know, definitely a bummer. Um, so definitely cannot wait to plan it again, start it back up. And 
what really set us apart too is I'm always looking for ways to set NFITC apart from everyone else. And last year was our very first time doing model auditions, in-person model auditions. And uh, we traveled to different parts of uh, the country. We went to New Mexico, Arizona, Oklahoma, North Dakota. We, of course, we have to go to South Dakota because that's where I'm from and um, Idaho and yeah, that's um, the places we went. And we would have a, an audition, an in-person in -person model audition. We invited models to come and walk for us and audition for us. And for a lot of people, this is new, but you know, this is standard in the fashion industry and that's where we want to go. We want to get to that level. We want to be taken that serious. So. We implemented in-person runway auditions. So that's pretty cool. Definitely sets us apart. And in this slide, that's our flyer for the our first fashion show, the first ever native fashion in the city fashion show. I found that it was so cool to see how far we've come. And on the bottom left is uh, one of the models from our first fashion show. So it was very of course, um, we used runway tile for the the catwalk, <laughs> and that right there is me and Zoe Friday, who is like my best friend, my sister, my Rapaho sister from Wyoming. She's been there um, from the very beginning. She first came to the first NFITC as a photographer, and every year she stayed on the team and helped and now we become very close and very close friends as well as um work partners we do native fashion in the city as well as native max stuff together she's always there anytime i need any advice any help she's there to help me and yes yeah, so that's our pic first picture together and of course we had our game faces on <laughs> we were like in the in the mode right in work mode so uh that's why we look very determined <laughs> i get comments about that picture all the time anyway next slide so lastly just wanted to talk about diversity in fashion so i'll make this very quick and the pictures that you see here are I wanted to incorporate a lot of the pictures that we have taken for Native Max magazine and I felt like represents the full wide scale of models, the different models that we work with. We work with different age groups, different ages, different sizes, different colors, different tribes. We work with, we try to work with as um, as much as we can. We incorporate a lot of different looks, different um, diversity into the magazine. And um, so I wanted to touch a little bit on how we, how we tackle, um, how we try to, I cannot think of us, how to work towards diversity in fashion, diversity and inclusion in fashion. When I was a teenager, I actually collected a lot of magazines. I collected so many magazines and catalogs and I, that was like our outfit inspo at that time. We didn't have Instagram. We had social media, but nobody was wearing like outfit, you know, outfit ideas like fashion bloggers and influencers today back then you look through magazines right so i would go through magazines and whatever looks i loved i would clip out different outfits and i would put them on my wall and i i would have you know friends come over some of my friends come over and one of my friends she said i noticed the models that you that you clip out and you put on your big collage is um brown brown models uh, black or Hispanic models you put on your wall. And I didn't notice that ever. And I was like, you know what, you're right. Why, you know, um, 
so I thought about it and you know, that's because they were, um, I could closely relate to them, even though they are not native American or indigenous, they are Brown, you know, uh, um, a person of color model. And I thought that's interesting. And still, you know, again, I'm reminded that I didn't see anyone that looked like me in, in the, the pages, you know, someone that was native or indigenous. And I, of course, you know, noticed that and that's something, that was another issue I wanted to, I wanted to bring to Native Max. Again, I wanted to include different looks, different people, different styles into Native Max. And yeah. Um, so of course, with the lack of diversity in fashion, um, there's a disconnection in seeing people who look like you on TV and magazines and movies. Um, Native people especially are, you know, the least represented in Hollywood and movies and modeling and publishing and entertainment, you know, across the board, we're very under or underrepresented and when we are, um, it's usually the wrong image and um, it really hurts our look and it just perpetuates stereotypes and you know I was there I, I was once you know a youth and I was into fashion and makeup and hair and clothes and but I didn't see anyone that looked like me anywhere and you know I could have easily you know, and then I had low self-esteem, low self-confidence. I could have easily chalked it up to, oh, well, you know, nobody cares about me or, you know, I'm not represented out there. My voice, my opinion doesn't matter. So I'll just leave it at that. No, I thought to myself, well, I'm going to do something about it. So because I'm stubborn and very resilient, like, like the, like um, my mom and my grandma. So I... Definitely, again, address that with our platforms, NFITC and Native Max Magazine. And another positive of diversity, inclusion, and fashion, uh, normalizing indigenous models in fashion and not fetish, fetishized or exoticized or romanticized. And of course, um, this, I also have ex personal experience with this when I, was modeling, starting out modeling, I, I would get booked and that's because, you know, photographers or fashion designers like bluntly would tell me, oh, we love your exotic look. We love your, you know, exotic, unique look. And the way it, that made it sound, it, it, it doesn't make you feel good, you know, when you're constantly being called exotic looking or you know, so that's why you book me. And it just really rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm not the only one. There are a lot of Native models that I work with who go through that. And it it's not cool. You know, again, it's perpetuating the stereotype of, you know, putting us on a something, giving us two braids, the typical you know, the stereotypical, like, oh, let me uh, wear these beads and feathers and this buckskin or whatever, like, uh, no, and you know, I we're, one we're, you know, contemporary, normal people ladies. too, so, want, yeah, and the other positive of diversity and fashion the fashion industry definitely needs to do better. It's not good enough to have a few token diversity inclusions in a promo campaign and then celebrate how diverse your fashion is later. Also, diversity and inclusion shouldn't be as groundbreaking. It should be a common occurrence. So that is a few of my really, really brief points of diversity in fashion. I could go on, I could go in depth, but for the sake of time, I made it very quick. 
And that is all for my talk this morning for Morning Brew. I want to thank you all for listening to my Morning Brew talk this morning. I really appreciate everyone tuning in this early morning. Thank you, Kelly. And I think it was just half an hour. I hope uh, you guys like it. And this is just like a small view of your work, what you're doing, but we hope this can be the occasion for more people to get involved and uh, to have your point of view. And maybe we can like all correct these uh, wrong vision that you experience and we can educate uh, everyone on the right part of uh, how you see it. I have actually some question for you. Guys, if you have uh, more questions, you can also write in the Q&A chat. Uh, I'm gonna start with the first one from uh, James. Hi, James. I, don't, I know you cannot answer, but he has been one of uh, our probably best Morning Brew fan. He has been to almost all the events. He said, congratulations, Kelly, for giving a voice to creative expression for native voices and a platform to express native beauty. I would be interested in learning how your models have embraced the idea of presenting authentic influence of native culture through fashion. Yeah, so I, I've met a lot of other native models who have gone through the same experience as me. And they're so, when I meet other models, they're so excited to work with us, whether that's the magazine or NFITC. You know, I'm, since I'm the founder and I do everything, nothing, you know, surprises me. I just feel like I'm just, this is not a big deal. And I think that's also the modest part of me. But when I do meet these models, they're so excited. They're like pumped to work with us. And they tell me that they say like, you're giving me a chance. I, you're giving me this chance that I don't get anywhere else. And a lot of our models are actually located on reservations. You know, reservations are very, if nobody knows, um, reservations are small pieces, small, um, small um, places where we um we're from where we live you know the government forced us onto these reservations so there are they're you know very um i can't think of that word i can't think of my sentences this morning very closed off far away from you know ma major cities um big bigger cities were pretty they're pretty closed off in resources and opportunities as well so <clears throat> you know uh, models that do come to our our different events they they're excited and they love to show off their culture this is what makes us different as well native max and native fashion in the city we incorporate our culture into everything that we do and <clears throat> everywhere else you really can't do that. You kind of have to um, code switch or walk into worlds where, you know, we go somewhere as a native person, I kind of have to, you know, code switch. And uh, with our events, we incorporate our culture, you know, with whatever we do. So uh, a lot of the models are so, you know, keen to um, showcasing their culture with, our events so yeah they're definitely excited i hope that answered your question <laughs> continue on that on what you just said uh how can members of the community support your mission and goals so definitely check out our websites nativemax.com and nativefashioninthecity.com and read about us, share our stories, share our mission, and 
and you know support our business our businesses uh, with Nata Max, we sell magazines. <clears throat> we also sell merch. We sell shirts, um, apparel, stickers. We sell all of that. And then with Native Fashion in the City right now, we are, I'm announcing that we're actually going to host uh, webinars for anyone who wants to learn how to get into the fashion industry or grow their fashion business with blogging or Instagram marketing or website design or um, how to fashion design, um, all of that. We are going to offer that on our Native Fashion in the City website. And we also sell merch as well on our Native Fashion in the City website. So everything that comes, everything that we sell, whether it's on Native Max or Native Fashion in the City, definitely goes back into our work of, you know, still creating all these opportunities for indigenous people to explore and enhance their talents. And um, nativemax.com is live. You can go on there right now. Native Fashion in the City will, I did a few updates. Um, I wanted to do them just in time for this talk. So we will, um, reopen our Native Fashion in the City website today. So we are on Facebook and Instagram. So give us a like and follow us, follow our journey and uh, yeah, our adventure. <laughs> so guys, you don't have to remember all the links. When you get the recap email, we are gonna include all of them. So you can check them up later. And then I just want to remind you that all our morning brew events are free, mm -hmm. uh, but you can donate. All the donations are going, uh, in this case for today, to Kelly and the Native Max, Max. So this is another way you can like support her and the Native American people. So for us, it's a way to like give voice to you and like, help support other community. And in regard to the magazine, can people buy that online or where can they find it? Yes, so our all of our magazines are on nativemax.shop. So it's www.nativemax.shop. And we have magazines on there. We have shirts. We have all kinds of cool stuff on there. And just recently, I um, created a design, a Prairie Rose design. And that is to help inspire, inspire and resiliency. Uh, that's what the Prairie Rose is known for. So um, that collection is on there as well. And yeah, you can shop our magazines on our online shop, nativemax.shop. I have one more question for you. Do you provide additional opportunity for native community members who want to work as fashion editors or critics? Yes, we definitely help come up with um, opportunities for the magazine. Um, I know in the past we've offered mentorships, internships as well. Um, I love to help anyone who's interested in working in publishing or in fashion or in multimedia <laughs> since we kind of do all of that. Um, so definitely I'm always open to working with anybody. It doesn't have to be an indigenous or native American person. I'm interested in working with everybody to help us grow and thrive. So definitely uh, contact us on our website. Uh, one more question from uh, Gretchen. I hope I say your name properly, otherwise I'm sorry. Um, this might be a redundant question, but could you share some of the barriers you face that might not be apparent to non-Native uh, viewers? What was the last part of that? I'm sorry. So, uh, if you can share some of the barriers that you face that might not be apparent to like non-Native viewers or people who are non-Native American, because sometimes it's all about like point of view, what was like a struggle for you, maybe for another person is not. So I think if you can share your vision and uh, your point of view, it could be helpful for other people to understand how you felt and what we can do so that doesn't happen. 
Yeah. So when I started Glamour here in Denver and I did different events, I, I was always asked like what I always face stereotypical barriers and you know, again, we're considered invisible. We're, or a relic of the past, you know, we're considered history. And because when I um, had different events with Glamour, people would ask me like, oh, what do Native Americans know what's in style or what do they know about fashion? So again, we're still kind of placed in history as like, we don't exist. And I, that was um, some of the types of barriers um, I faced as a, with um, Glamour as a designer and stylist and with modeling, kind of the same thing. And also again, um, discrimination. There were a few times where I was asked to leave a photo shoot because I wasn't your typical, you know, Caucasian model. I remember I was supposed to do a pinup shoot and I was asked to leave by the photographer because I didn't have that typical American pinup look, you know, white skin, light hair, light eyes, you know, I'm definitely, I definitely don't look like that. So those were the barriers that we came across and I, I came across. And again, when I talk to other native people, native models, they go through the same thing. And it's very tough, you know, when they do find gigs, again, it's, can you put two braids in your hair? Can you put a feather? Can we, you know, and it's perpetuating that stereotype. So it's, you know, we're constantly working towards all of these barriers and um, all of these issues, you know, where <clears throat> on one hand, you're, we're put in the past, you know, like, what do you know what's in fashion? What do you know about all of that? And then over here, like, okay, we do want to work with you, but can you help us, you know, we want to fetishize you or exoticize you. We want to, um, you know, put you in this stuff. I've had that happen to me so many times and I actually would just walk off because I, I'm not going to accept it anymore. I'm not, I'm a, you know, contemporary whole person that's living in today's century. I know how to use the internet. I, you know, I could do all this stuff and I'm not going to be put in that box anymore. And again, with our platforms, we're trying to address those issues and make it easier for native people to, you know, um, explore and thrive in multimedia and uh, entertainment and fashion and all of that. So. Those are just some, I know it's hard to believe there's times where people are like, they cannot believe I've been told that. And it's, it's crazy. It's even lately, like two years ago, I heard something like that. Like this fuels my fire, you know, to keep going, to keep, you know, um, creating these opportunities and keep this work going because as recently as two years ago, I heard something. So <laughs> yeah. You use the word invisible and I feel sad on a certain way because I think that's not how everyone should feel about. And uh, you also said that people thank you because you gave them a chance. And I hope um, today's episode gave a chance to yourself to skip up, to like speak up, to reach more people, no Native American. And uh, I hope this can be the occasion for like more uh, like everyone else or like more people to like know who you are, what you can do and uh, support you and your community. And uh, just so you know, we have another exciting event coming in October and we are going to discuss that in a different uh, topic, not now, but maybe it can be another chance for you and your community to like uh, have a voice again. <laughs> yeah, yes. So 
Uh, we actually have another comment I was gonna read it to you from Chris. He said, you're such an inspiration, especially for us creative native kids. Thank you, your presentation was very inspiring. And I think with this note, I wanna like close today episode. And thank you, Chris, and thank you, Kelly. Um, I think, I don't know, uh, I think Chris said that all better than what uh, I could say in this uh, occasion. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna send a recap email with all Kelly's info and website. So just check for that later. And also, if you want, you can uh, watch it again and share it with our uh, community. And thank you, Kelly, for being our guest today. Thank you, everyone. I'm, again, so happy and thankful to be on here to share my story. I'm always thankful and humbled when I, whenever I get an opportunity to share my story. So again, thank you. Morning, Brew. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you everyone for tuning in this morning. Ciao and have a great day, everyone. Bye, see ya.